Hi, and welcome back for part three of my uh, steampunk design demo. Uh, the first part we talked about uh, conceiving our uh, item, uh, thinking up what exactly we wanted to do. Uh, the second part, once we decided what project we wanted to work on, we, we did, talked a little bit about layout and how to set that up. And so part three, we're going to dive right into building this thing and uh, actually putting stuff together, uh, working on the execution. So one of the things that uh, you really want to consider when you, when you actually start building something like this is the order that you're going to get uh, everything together under. What, what exactly are you going to do first? And you really need to be thinking about ahead of time um, what, you know, two or three steps ahead so that you don't accidentally put something together and you've forgotten a step because, you know, there's nothing worse than to try to take it all back apart to fix something that you forgot. So always keep in mind uh, what order you're going to put things in and always think a few steps ahead and think, you know, when you're building something like this. Um, something else that's really important to do is keep all the parts that you plan on using together in the same uh, same place so you don't not run all over the place looking or you don't forget to put a part on because it wasn't with the rest of it. Uh, I've got these little uh, cheap dish pans that, that I use pretty frequently. You pick them up at the dollar store for, you know, a buck a piece. And uh, I've just got a whole stack of them that I put my orders in. I keep all my parts separate from my different orders. Um, when I'm working on stuff like this, I even have smaller dividers that I put different pieces in and uh, put it in there. So keep everything organized and know exactly what's going to go where. So uh, keeping it all together is really, really helpful. So the first thing we're actually going to do with, uh, with this bracer design, with the science bracer design, uh, is we're going to actually prep the leather and get that ready for our components. And once I have that, uh, the, the basic prep work done, then I'm going to actually start building some of the components and putting them on there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set up the camera just so you can get a closer look at some of the leather detail work that I'm going to do. And I'll be right back. All right, we're back, and I'm going to show you a few little things here uh, that I do when I'm going to prep the leather work. Uh, I think it's really, really important to, to really develop a professional eye for detail when you're working on stuff like this. Um, it's really easy to, you know, just do some quick cuts. I mean, you know, this, as it is right now, you know, you're, you're asking yourself, well, what prep work do you really need to do for this? Um, and I think it's really important to, to look at some of the little tiny things uh, that can be done to actually give your, your product a little bit more of, a, of an edge, a professional edge. Now, you can definitely tell the difference between something that's handmade versus something that is mass produced in a factory uh, by looking at the small little imperfections, you know. It doesn't, doesn't matter how good you are, there's always going to be a little bit of, of things that are off when you cut things by hand. I cut everything by hand. Um, you know, there, there's just no way to make everything absolutely perfect, you know, unless you're doing computer controlled cuts and that kind of thing. Um, now, the difference between a professional and an amateur is how hard you have to look to find those imperfections. So, what you want to strive to do in you know when you're making this stuff is to really make it look like you know like it was it was really um, well crafted everything to line up and, and look as finished as possible and some of the things that uh, to do that is um, when I'm doing the leather work I don't leave a sharp point on edges like this this is going to go around the wrist that sharp point it's just, it doesn't, number one, it doesn't look finished. Number two, you don't want that kind of digging into the wrist or something there. So we're going to do some things. And I actually I have a punch that I made here. Um, this is actually just part of a drive shaft that uh, I cut a cross section of, sharpened one edge once I got, I bent the uh, curve the way that I wanted, and then um, welded on uh, a bolt on the back side. So I've got a whole bunch of these, and all of them have a different curved angle to them. Uh, and this is the one I use, use the most. And I use this to round off edges when I have corners and stuff that I, uh, you know, need to smooth out. And that this is actually a, a lot better it, it, to do, I think, than hand, trying to hand cutting, especially curves. Uh, number one, it's going to be consistent. So that curve is the same on every one of these little, little edges that I do. 
I, I mean, if you can't do that, that's, you know, it's obvious, you know, do the best that you can. You know, if you have to cut, the, cut it by hand, then do so. Um, this is just one of the things that I found, you know, if I'm going to be doing a lot of this, it speeds things up for me to be able to do. Um, something else that we want to do, now we've taken, you know, it's a really subtle and minor thing to take and round these corners off and stuff like that, but something else is the edge of this. This is, you know, an 8 ounce leather, it's fairly thick, and the cross section of this leaves a sharp edge here and here. And you actually have tools for that, uh, these edging tools, and I have a couple of different ones that I use. And we're actually going to take this and we're going to round this corner off. Because this, again, is another sharp thing. This is just another little professional detail that you can do uh, when you're working with the leather work. And these just, uh, the corner of this slides right down the grooving tool here. And uh, it just brings off a little curved, a little, uh, little curl of leather you can see coming off there. And what that does is that smooths this out and rounds that edge a little bit. And later on, I'm going to show you how to finish this with some uh, gum, uh, gum trag. It'll smooth this out, make it a, you know, a lot nicer, smoother, finished looking product. And I think, I think that professional edge is really important. Now the back side I use a little, a little bit different tool. It cuts, cuts a little differently. They, there's all kinds of different sizes and shapes of these edging tools. They cut different, uh, different depths. They cut more of the corner off. Um, and I, these are the two that I use. You can use whatever works you know, for you. But anytime that I'm working with a thicker leather like this, uh, when I need to smooth it out, then I always do this front and back. Um, you know, the thinner strapping, sometimes it's, you know, it's just too thin. Five ounce leather, it's a little bit too thin to actually do that with. But with this thicker leather, uh, I, I think it's really important. And this goes kind of back into the idea of having smooth edges clean lines. You want to make sure that you're doing your edging. Uh, you want to make sure that your lines are straight. Uh, when you're cutting these out, you don't want these lines to be wobbly. Use a ruler. Good If you're doing cutting the leather, good metal edged ruler like this is really important to have. I use this a lot and everything. Um, all right. So this is now at a point where, you know, it's ready to start taking uh, design pieces to put on that. So I'm going to actually go over to my soldering bench now and start putting together some of the components and deciding how I want those to go together. Once we have that on, we'll start putting them on the leather them itself so that way we can start putting our holes in for our rivets uh, and then move into the design phase where we'll tool in our designs and then we'll take it to die and then we'll do the assembly. Alright, as you can see I've already got uh, some of this started already here and uh, I finished making my uh, gauge, so that's all ready to go. It's got this protective uh, plastic on it here to keep the glass from getting scratched up. I'll leave that on there until uh, I get ready to do the assembly or after I finish the assembly to protect it. And I've already started assembling my emitter here or my receiver, I mean. And uh, if you, I don't know if you can tell with the coloring there, but I've already added a copper, a really light copper tone to the uh, emitter itself. No, it was originally it was this kind of uh, silver, uh, it was a steel uh, piece, it's a piece of the CO2 cartridge there. So I like to uh, usually do my steel, I, I like to um, give it a little bit of a brass look or copper look if I can. Um, I've got several different techniques that I use for that, I uh, won't get into that right now. But anyways, I got the, got the emitter belt here. I got my pieces kind of laid out where I want. I've started kind of deciding. I'm going to go ahead and um, put my glim right in, right into the uh, receiver here, and uh, get that ready to go and uh, finish building the rest. So I get my uh, LED hidden up inside here. Uh, so it's going to look something, something along these lines, uh, and I have to make some different mounts uh, so I can actually put it under the bracer. So I'm going to work a little bit more on some of my tubing and getting those soldered together and get this piece built so that I have something to actually mount right onto the onto the leather piece. So we'll be back in just a little bit and I'll show you where I'm at. I thought I actually might show you another little thing, a little trick that I do. Uh, I make all my own little springs that I put on things for uh, you know different, uh, different things and uh, I, if you are not familiar with how to make a spring they're really easy to make. Um, the, the best thing to do is just use a nice 
Uh, there's all kinds of different sizes of bolts uh, that you can use. Um, these are just carriage bolts. I actually have uh, ground, ground down and so it's kind of flat on both sides so I can get a hold of it. But all you do is you take your wire, you know, brass wire, copper wire, whatever wire that you've got there, and you kind of crimp it around one end here with your finger and hold it. And while you're holding it, you're going to squeeze the wire and turn it so the wire actually gets pushed into uh, the threads. So once you uh, get a piece as long as you want it, I'm going to make this one a little bit longer. So it takes a couple minutes to do, but if you're looking, you know, for different colored springs and different different things to use, this is a, a really uh, economical way to do it. it. Doesn't take that long to do. You're going to snip that off, and then uh, all you do is just uh, unscrew it from the threads. So, but as you can see there, the comes right off. The spring looks, you know, just like a little spring, and you can kind of adjust the, the shape a little bit, you know, for whatever you're going to use it for. Um, I'm going to use this one on my glass vials here. So I'll actually uh, shape this so that it goes onto the vial itself. As you can see there. And then I'll spread it out just a little bit so that the, uh, the light from the LED will shine through that. And you know you'll get you'll get an illusion of light without being able to actually see the diode itself, um, so you're not seeing the modern day stuff. Um, just gives it, you know, a little bit more of a, um, you know, mechanical electronic look or whatever. It can give it kind of a mystical quality. Um, seeing the light source without you know actually being able to see what the light source is. So it gives some you know just something else that I like to do. You have the pieces of something a little bit more unique. So, anyways, that's how you make a spring. And I'm going to keep working on some of this and get the springs made and get these soldered together. And I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so I got a few more pieces soldered together here. Uh, this is going to go on the back and it's going to hide my uh, wiring. It's going to go right here. And I've got a, the LED is going to go on that. And this is going to run down to the control box. And I'm probably going to put some brass plating. I'm going to put, make a leather pouch with some brass plating on here so I can solder my tubing directly to the, to the uh, piece here. And uh, I've also got my tubing soldered into my uh, CO2 canister here. And uh, that's ready to go together. Um, I'm going to actually solder this so that it comes into the detector right there. But before I finish that, to make it easier, I'm going to go ahead and do my copper plating. So I thought I'd give you a before and after shot of the uh, plating process. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, prep this for plating, and I'll come back in just a minute and show you what it looks like. All right, so I've got it uh, plated, I think, uh, as much as I want. I'm just putting a really, really light coat on here. I don't know if you can see the difference in the light there. I'm going to see if I can get it a little bit closer. But this is uh, the original color here, just a silver tone. And then this has got a light uh, copper plate to it, and it's going to darken a little bit over time as, uh, as the copper tarnishes a bit. Um, I'll probably let it darken some, and then I'll put a really light clear coat on it to kind of preserve it to where it's at, and it'll protect it, because the plating is really thin, so you, know, you don't want it to just wear off in five minutes. So anyways, um, just one quick thing. I know I, there's a lot of, I'm not going to show you how to do the plating in this video. There's a lot of places on YouTube and stuff that... Uh, do have uh, videos on copper plating. Something that I really think that a lot of them forget to mention is that when you're working with copper, especially solutions with copper in it, copper sulfate for etching or uh, you know copper plating or stuff like that, anything that's got copper in solution, uh, that stuff is highly toxic. Um, the copper itself will pass the blood skin barrier and it does build up in the system. It is cumulative um, and you can get copper poisoning. So Anytime that you're working with chemicals and stuff like that, you want to make sure that you're wearing uh, gloves that are resistant to that. So um, I'm not going to show you all the steps on how I do it, um, but if you're going to do it and you do look it up, also please look up the safety uh, issues for that as well. It's really, really important. Uh, we're having fun doing this, but we don't want anybody getting sick. So uh, be very careful.